Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as links to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. One thing to note in the markets, we're coming close to the quadruple witching hour. Quadruple witching is going to occur, occur on the 16th of September. That's just a few days away. This is a date on which stock index futures, stock index options, stock options and single stock futures all expire simultaneously. It's basically the end of the quarter and the institutions are closing out their derivatives positions. Typically, what do we see on a quadruple witching day? It's generally a bearish day. Quad witching week is generally bullish and we've seen a lot of bullish behavior, but the last hour of quadruple witching day is bearish on average. And please note, $487 million worth of Bitcoin options will be expiring just in a few days on 16th of September. What could potentially happen in the market? Well, just let's analyze a little bit on what did happen in previous quadruple witching days. What we saw back on the 17th of June 2022, we had a bit of a lead up, positive lead up, and then it sold off and then recovered. What about when we go back to the 18th of March 2022? We saw a bullish next day and then a retracement, then a continuation, just a bit of a bump in the road. What about if we go back to the 17th of December? We saw a downtrend and then a reversal and then a continuation of that downtrend. What about the 17th of September? We saw it pretty, pretty flat and then it sold off and then it reversed. What about if we go back to the 18th of June? We saw continua, a continuation, continued negative momentum, and then bottomed out and then turned around in time. You can see that it's not always just one thing or another. It really depends on the trend. One thing that could be really helpful for you, we're actually overcoming a level of long-term resistance in Bitcoin's price. It would be very natural for Bitcoin to retrace, say to around the 20 and a half thousand mark, and then consolidate and potentially move up. If it's going to move up, it's going to need a lot of buyers to step in. And what we do as crypto technical analysts, we can't just analyze the chart we trade because there's so many charts that affect that chart hidden behind that chart that you only know about if you know about how markets work. That's why we're always looking outside the crypto market to gain signal. And there are pretty big signals on the horizon. The CPI and the core CPI come out on Tuesday, September the 13th. We've got the PPI and the core PPI coming out on Wednesday. Core retail sales, retail sales month on month coming out Thursday. And the preliminary UOM, consumer sentiment, coming out on Friday. Jerome Powell gave his speech at Jackson Hole and he was very, very specific with his direction on what the Fed needed to do. They need to cure rational inattention. That is forward inflation rate data. They need to be really, really aggressive and bring down the 10 year break even inflation rate and the five year break even inflation rate. They're currently doing so. And how are they doing that? They're raising the percentage probability of a 75 basis point increase. Remember back when Jackson Hole was happening, people thought a 50 basis point increase wouldn't occur. It would be less than that. Now it's 8%, 8% probability of a 50%, 50 basis point increase in the federal funds rate. It's literally a non-existent probability. We have about nine days until the FOMC meets to increase the federal funds rate. And back then, when Jerome Powell did his speech from Jackson Hole, I said 100 basis points would probably be statistically probable to actually appear on the federal funds rate data. That is that we would see that 100 basis point 
potential rise to actually pop on this particular chart from the FedWatch tool. And that graphic, that video was from Tales from the Man Cave. What a talent, what an incredible talent. And one thing to note, when we listen and look at the speeches from all the Fed representatives, they continue to talk about Russia's continuing war against Ukraine as a factor that's pushing up global inflation. It's important to understand the interconnected nature of financial markets. We also saw the same thing from Mester's speech, talking about the war in Ukraine, supply chain disruptions. In the past four days, the Ukrainian forces have advanced on Russian troops and they've regained so much land equivalent to around the size of New York. When Russia started its war against Ukraine, you could see that there was a lot of territory taken. And what do we see right now? That territory has been reclaimed by Ukraine and it's come at a massive loss of Russian lives. As of September 11, 52,650 Russian troops have lost their lives and Ukrainians have lost their lives as well. It's just an absolute tragedy. And when you compare it to deaths against Pearl Harbor, the Afghanistan war, the Iraq war, Iwo Jima, compared to that just on one side of the fence, the losses are really staggering. The potential is the Ukraine-Russian war will continue on for quite some time, but you can see the Ukrainian army has absolutely belittled and pushed back the Russian advance. If that wasn't the case, as Vladimir Putin always said, he said, it's just a special operation, we'll take Ukraine within a week. That didn't happen. This could create very positive headwinds to reduce the amount of inflation globally. This will make a huge difference to all the central banks all around the world in their aggressiveness on raising rates. And don't forget, when the ECB raises rates, the Fed will raise rates and so forth and so on. They're all looking at each other. This is why we need, even though we study technical analysis, we must look beyond the charts and gain a deeper and broader perspective, macroeconomically and politically and otherwise. But we always remain neutral. One piece of news that I really wanted to make you aware of was the chairman, Gary Gensler, of the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, spoke at Washington, D.C. just recently. And one thing that I do not understand, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this. He says, Gary says, I'd like to note that my views are my own. I'm not speaking on behalf of the commission or SEC staff. Why is he speaking then? And we see this time and time again by our leaders, Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, president and CEO says, the views I present will be my own and not necessarily those of the Federal Reserve System or my colleagues on the FOMC. So why are they talking? I would think that the CEO of a particular organization would be responsible and accountable for their words. Please let me know in the comments, what do you think? And what about Vice Chair Brainard? Is she actually doing her own personal interpretation or is this the actual vice chair of the Fed talking? Well, we need to go right down to the footnotes and see, no, these views are my own and do not necessarily reflect those of the Federal Reserve Board or the FOMC. I would ask the question, why don't they reflect the views of the Fed or the FOMC? I believe if people are going to represent an organization, they should at least represent the organization they speak for. I think it's only when we understand what is actually happening here. And why do I raise this, especially with the chairman of the SEC, Gary Gensler? Because there's so much rubbish going on in the XRP case about, oh, well, that speech was just his personal opinion and didn't represent the views of the Securities Exchange Commission. Well, that just creates ambiguity, strategic, legal, and otherwise tactical ambiguity. It's not fair and it's not reasonable. And it's a reasonable person would actually rely on what they read from these people. I think we need to see these kind of statements, these kind of exclusion clauses. That's what we use in the eyes of the law, exclusion clauses. They need to be removed. 
So what does Chairman Gary Gensler of the SEC talk about crypto? But of course, it doesn't represent the SEC at all, but it kind of does. But it doesn't because he said it didn't. What does he say? He says no honest business need fear the SEC. Well, that's not quite what's happening at the moment. He was saying that in the, the depths of the Great Depression, the Securities Act of 1933 was created was born and then the securities exchange act of 1934 and then six years later the investment company act in and investment advisors act of 1940 followed he's saying there's been continued innovation in legislation and he also says that pretty much every crypto is a security and it needs to be treated as such. But remember, this is just personal Gary talking at the barbecue, not Chairman Gary, because he's already said he's not Chairman Gary in this. So can the crypto market actually put any stock in Gary's words? Absolutely and utterly not, because it's just his personal opinion. What is the opinion of the SEC? And why isn't anybody saying that? Because that's what we need to hear, not people's personal opinions, but statutory legal opinions. All market participants require clarity. There cannot be clarity when there's strategic ambiguity, and that's all this is all about. As the human race heads towards the stars, good old Elon, thank you for that. The concept is that digital money be becomes more and more critically important, and these old-fashioned laws with old-fashioned tests are not helping anyone. There seems to be an enormous power grab occurring at the moment but the concept i can just explain what all of this means to you basically gary in his own personal opinion and not in the opinion of the chairman of the sec is just basically saying everything in crypto is a security except for this very very small number which is a non-security he puts a lot of footnotes and a lot of links in here. And one thing that I see, there's so much enforcement action that the SEC is currently undertaking, but they can't beat XRP. Why can't they beat it? Basically, Gary is saying in his own personal opinion, just like he's chatting with you at a barbecue, he's basically saying everything inside crypto is a security except one or two things, but just about everything else is. And stable coins are just money market funds. And that means they need to be registered with the SEC. What Gary says in here is very, very interesting. It's all about the fact that it's all so obvious that crypto tokens are securities. It's just a no brainer. I would ask the question, if it's a no brainer, if it's so simple that every crypto is a security, why isn't XRP a security? Why didn't the court case with XRP just last a week or two instead of years? When we look at Gary's words in here, in terms of all the things that he talks about, I would just urge you, this is Gary talking to you at a private event, not representing the Securities Exchange Commission in his paid role as chairman and leader of that particular organization. I'm really looking forward to seeing a politician or somebody employed by the government saying that their views do represent the organization that they lead. Wouldn't that be a great change in policy? Please let me know in the comments. Do you think that's fair? Do you think that elected officials, people who are paid a lot of money to represent and run organizations should be speaking on behalf of those organizations? Or do you think it's just all personal views, just like catching up over a beer? People tend to protest about a wide variety of different things. What about making these public officials accountable for their words? That would be a good thing to bring up in policy. The thing that I really like about Jerome Powell's speech at Jackson Hole, he doesn't do that rubbish. He doesn't put disclaimers. He goes out as chairman of the Fed and he says what he says. I'm impressed with him. In the last session, we saw fear just edging up, prices edging down in the NASDAQ 100. And what did we see? 
with bond prices. They're continuing to fall. Bond yields are continuing to rise. Gold came up a little bit, just wavering around somewhat. And the dollar has continued on its descent. We also notice that junk bonds are starting to do well. This could be a turnaround sign. We don't want to read too much into things at the moment, but it does quite, it does look good. And oil bounced off a technical level, literally, it bounced off that level. Are there any headwinds in the market? We can see that we've come back up to resistance on the NASDAQ. We could expect sellers to be here and say, oh, not quite so fast, I'm gonna take some profit. There are many rules shared inside the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass, and one of the more important ones is Rule 225. Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. We look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin will impact your alts. If Bitcoin is collaps collapsing, your alts will collapse far, far faster than Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is rallying, your alts will be pulled in that gravitational direction as well. You must look at Bitcoin and you must look at the markets. When looking at the S&P 500, we can see that in the last session it was 41.10. We have support at 40.97. And don't forget, these are dynamic smart money buy and sell levels derived from the CTKS method. And we look at all of market structure, not just recent price action. Recent price action will absolutely lead you <laughs> through the garden path. It's not representative. You need to look at actual price action. And we can see two levels of resistance above, one at 41.47 and 41.58. There's a very high level of resistance at 42.07, but you can see the support coming down here from 40.39 and 39.78 and also 39.60. Now, what does this mean? We're in the middle, literally in no man's land between a level of resistance and multiple levels of support. We could conceivably bounce down. Remember the quadruple witching is at hand and institutions are closing off their books to reopen them again. So we could actually see price come down, but there's a lot of support here. So we could see it also rally up. Does it mean it's just going to go down? Not necessarily because the resistance levels are a way away. If we had very tight resistance above us, we could say that the probabilities would favor a move to the downside, but we don't actually see that at the moment. The resistance levels are above the current price. That gives us some wiggle room. And many people say, oh, Ken, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, they don't do anything to Bitcoin. But if you look at this blue line, this is Bitcoin's price action. Do you see the association between Bitcoin's price action and the S&P 500? And let me know what you think about this in the comments. Is this something you've been looking at? Gold is also coming into a good support level at 1731. It's currently 1733. The next resistance level above is 1749. Next support level below is 1708. Just please pay attention to all these resistance levels playing out from 1758 up to 1767. There's a mass of them there. Our job as crypto technical analysts is to understand and plan for not just our trade, but our entire portfolio. What do we do if price goes against us? Just think of a traffic light or if price goes nowhere or it lastly goes for us. We know that we control the trade or investment and we know all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell, but the market controls the return. We need to control ourselves in order to receive the market's return. And what have we seen over the past 24 hours? We've seen the prices actually come up to that 22222 mark that I spoke about, and now it's starting to retrace. What we actually see is that Bitcoin potentially is undergoing a trend change. It's really, really early and we have to be mindful that it can happen. And we have a top level of resistance up here at around 31,345, but it's looking really good. We've overcome the one, well, Bitcoin's price currently 22, 122. 
We've overcome this level of resistance at around 20,161. Overcome this level of resistance at 22,041. We're just above that at the moment. The higher one to go to is around this 31,000 mark. So we could see a rally, but we always have to keep in mind what the inflation data does when the CPI and the CPI core come out and the PPI and the core PPI come out. What are they going to do to Fed decisions? We know that the 75 basis point increase is pretty much guaranteed at this stage, but could it go to 100 or could it come back to 50 basis points? When we understand Jerome Powell's talk from Jackson Hole about rational inattention, the capability of them to come back for a 50 basis point increase is just non-existent because they need to break the back of inflationary expectations in decisions. One thing that's very important to Bitcoin and indeed the stock market as well is the flight to safety in the DXY. We can see the DXY coming down, but this doesn't give us a lot of context. We need those smart money buy and sell levels up so we can tell what's happening inside the market. The DXY is currently 108 two, three, four. And what we actually see, there's a lot of resistance above this current price. We broke through a key level in the past trading session and the DXY just couldn't get back up above it. Their sellers are coming in. The DXY is an incredibly overtrouded trade and overcrowded trade. And what do we actually see with Bitcoin? Bitcoin, when the DXY came down, Bitcoin had a bit of a delayed reaction. It was about seven and a half hours of delayed reaction, and then it took off. Remember, these things are not instantaneous, and that's something to bear in mind. Now, what do we have to note as traders in crypto and investors, of course, we need to note that there's a lot of support around the 107235, 107214, 107014, 107432. All of this area will be very rigorously defended by buyers. They will seek to push up the DXY there. And these Stanfield levels, these levels form through confluence of the CTKS method, that method that I developed that looks at all of price history and all of price action and creates smart money buy and sell levels. This is really vital stuff to understand. When we hit a very high level of resistance and we don't actually pass through it, we fall under it. We're probably going to the next strongest support level. Just always bear these things in mind. This can actually help us quite significantly with Bitcoin's potential price actions. If the dollar continues to sell off to come back to a support level, we could see Bitcoin and crypto start to creep up to this 23321 mark. We always have our three dimensional process, our three dimensional thinking in mind at every time. We always ask ourselves, will the market go down? That's a D. Flat? That's an F. Or up? That's a U for our Borsog code. What is the potential that price moves against our portfolio, goes nowhere and just, just goes flat basically or goes for us? And these percentages will change in line with what you do and how you trade and invest each and every single day. And how synchronized are you with the market? Do you feel that you've got the Midas touch or do you feel that markets are totally erratic and it's very, very difficult to get a grasp on what's happening from day to day? And that synchronization factor is, of course, always your personal, personal thing, just like Gary Gensler's speech. But over time, you'll get more and more accurate determining what's going on. And we can see with the number of margin Bitcoin shorts, they're dramatically or traumatically decreasing. The longs are buying the dip, but with a little bit less confidence at the moment. And what are we seeing here? We could see potentially the shorts start to reverse because that would be a very reasonable thing. The shorts and the longs are always liquidating each other and they're always rotating as well. If we look back on price history, all the way back to 2021, we can see that the shorts have lacked a lot of conviction and confidence to get into the market. 
the markets were very overheated to the negative side and the shorts have reversed all their positions. I, I believe the shorts have been liquidated by the large institutions. From our analysis as crypto technical analysts, we look at this information, we can see that the longs have been buying the dip with abandon and the shorts are saying, well, you know what, even though economic conditions are really bad, inflation is running riot all around the world. I think I'm just going to exit the market at the moment. Things are far, far too unclear. When we look into the shorts at this particular time, it does look like it's starting to curl around. Let's just change the time frame on this. Maybe go to a two hour. OK, we can see some degree of confidence is coming back into the market, but the longs are also increasing. Let's have a look at who's winning the battle today. The truth is, it's not a battle at all. The longs come in and hit the market up and the shorts come in and chill the market down. They work symbiotically. Over the past 24 hours, there's been 156.11 million in liquidations across 62,950 positions. If you don't want to be one of these positions, it's really simple. Just don't leverage trade. Just buy at spot until you learn. And let's have a look at the past 24 hours. Over the past 24 hours, about 61% of total liquidations have been long liquidations. Over the past 12 hours, it's about, say, 75% long. The past four hours, about 82% long. And the past hour, 70, say, 71% long. Just rounding up there. The concept is that the longs are currently getting hit. When we look across the past few days, we can see that the longs are starting to get more liquidated than the shorts. If you're ever curious on how many cryptos there actually are, CoinMarketCap has a very good reading. 20,945 cryptos in the crypto space. That is quite a few. And across the past 24 hours, we've seen crypto market cap decrease by 0.08% to $1.06 trillion. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Ravencoin up nearly 23%. Golem, nearly oh, just a little over 15% up. Happy Golem. HBAR nearly 8% up, as is Solana, and the graph nearly 6% up. Leading up the back of the pack with the greatest losses in the top 100, Lunacy, <laughs> Lunacy, Terra Classic down 26.26%, Luna down 21.37%, USTC, Terra Classic USD down 18.38%, Chainlink down 5.68% and Convex Finance CVX down 5.06%. There's some really interesting behavior with the alts, the top alts, and we know no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So what we expect to see in 99% of cases, when Bitcoin comes up, the alts will follow. When Bitcoin comes down, the alts will follow. We're saying, seeing something really interesting here. Ethereum has been weakening against Bitcoin. You can see it very, very clearly here. BNB also weakening. We know that Bitcoin is coming down at the moment, but we also know BNB is coming down harder. Ethereum is coming down harder as well. Poor old ADA. ADA is getting hit really solidly. It's really coming down. XRP is also moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. Solana is showing a lot of strength. Actually, Solana has been showing a lot of strength, full stop, for quite a while. Doge is coming down, but greater than Bitcoin's descent. And DOT is really coming down. And Matic is just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. It has been particularly strong. Let's have a look at Ethereum and see if we can figure out what's actually occurring. Why is it selling off? Is it hitting some form of resistance? To answer this question, we go to the CTKS method and derive the daily dynamic smart money buy and sell levels. Let's do that now. What we see is a completely different picture. We can see that there's been a resistance at 1789.60 and 1802.62. Basically, price came up on the daily, trying to get above this level, but was rejected. And now it's, what's it done? It's found support at 1678 and bounced up. What do we anticipate or what are we looking for here? We can see that there's enormous resistance up at 2131 and 2205. 
What about going down the other way? Where do we see a lot of support? We have support at 1554, 1468 and 13.38. Now we also see a lot of support around the 1200 zone. And just keep in your mind that the Ethereum merge is coming up on the 14th of September. Please let me know your Borsog code for today. It's very helpful to understand that the market will never know you. Because the market doesn't know you, it doesn't know anything about your background story. It doesn't know or understand how important the money is that you put into the market. It has no feeling for when you lose or no feeling for when you gain. The question becomes, what does the market reward? The market rewards your knowledge and your active learning. It also rewards your emotional control. That's why putting your Borsog code in each and every day, the market rewards inner peace and outer peace. And most of all, it rewards your knowledge. I'd like to thank everyone yesterday for their comments on empathy. Just brilliant. You'll find in the crypto market, things don't always turn out the way you planned. And those around you may not understand what's going on. There's a big difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is just an acknowledgement of what is happening to another person, but empathy is actually feeling the feelings, even if you haven't had a shared experience. As a community, we strive for inner and outer peace because that's where the profitability of life resides. You can see that empathy is much, much deeper than sympathy. And that's why empathy makes the list of positive excellence points, but sympathy doesn't. There were so many incredible comments. I'll read them out over the next couple of days and feel free to add some more in if you would like on empathy. Jake shared, and it's really nice to see you here, Jake. I too was blaming myself and others when the market did the opposite of what I wanted. But as time went on, I learned not to blame, but to reflect, think better, and better control my emotions. You win and lose, that's life. You cannot control everything, that's impossible. But you can if you can try to control your own emotional behavior. It's not easy since we are emotional creatures, but you must try to control the ancient emotional part of the brain and you will make less mistakes. Thinking critically and thoughtfully, but don't be an emotional zombie either. It's a fine balance between logic and emotion, thinking and feeling. Well done, Jake. It's a really insightful comment. And I would like to, from the bottom of my heart, just deeply thank everybody that explores these issues. They're really, really important. Being inside the financial markets for many, many decades, I understand. And that's why I share the positive excellence framework with you, because it will make the difference to the happiness of your life. And it's important to know if you really want to be happy, you can't be happy and in conflict at the same time. No matter what anyone tells you, it's just not possible. And because we have empathy, we can care for others. And if you're going through a life pullback, please know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will come out again and there's always hope. Before we trade or invest, we need to prime our minds for profitability in the crypto market. And how do we do that? We do that through the CTKS Creed. The CTKS Creed is a series of positive affirmations that you tell yourself to get in the right frame of mind. Albert Einstein said, one of the most important decisions you'll ever have to make is if the universe in which you live is hostile or friendly. So with the words of Albert Einstein, we start our creed. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. It's because of the volatility, the incredible volatility and uncertainty and anxiety that can occur in the crypto market that we have the CTKS Creed. It helps so many people. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.